In this demonstration, we're going to look at how VSS, the virtual system simulator from, from uh, AWR, can be used with Microwave Office uh, in a co-simulation mode in real time. Uh, what I have here is a rather simplistic system, but it'll help demonstrate the concepts that uh, I'm, we're trying to get across here. Um, it's a 16 QAM system, nothing very spectacular, um, where we're just having a uh, signal constantly go through this system, uh, through an amplifier, uh, into a channel, and then... Uh, with some phase shift on the front of the generalized receiver. One of the nice features of VSS is that the system stays totally synchronized um, receiver to transmitter um, because the receiver is smart enough to continually look at the, uh, the settings on the transmitter to make sure that it's receiving the proper signal. But uh, what we're going to do here that's a little bit different is we're going to um, use an actual microwave office circuit. So we're going to embed a circuit defined in the frequency domain in our uh, time-based simulation here. And uh, we're going to see uh, how we can co-design the system with the circuit at the same time. So if we look at our overall system, we can see the uh, AM to AM, uh, I'm sorry, AM to PM performance here. And we're kind of um, operating at a power level just below where we start to go um, pretty nonlinear. Um, you can see that we have a somewhat clean constellation where we're starting to get some rotation, but not a whole lot as we would expect from the AM to PM graph. Uh, and we're transmitting enough power that's in band above the noise floor that we can adequately receive the signal. So one of the things we can do with VSS is we can um, reach into this environment and start tuning. And I've set up the output level of the transmitter as a tuning variable. So if we drop the output power way down, you can see in real time the um, power level gets below the noise floor and we can't properly distinguish the uh, constellation. And as we bring this back up slowly, we get above the noise floor. You can see that in the spectral graph. And the receiver is able to distinguish and um, identify the individual uh, bits in the, in the signal. Now, one of the other things we may want to do is we may want to determine uh, changes that we can make at the transistor level of the amplifier to optimize the, the system or see how it perform in other systems. So uh, what we'll do is we'll go and we'll open up the uh, amplifier and we'll go and start tuning or adjusting the power on the uh, on the drain or I'm sorry on the uh, on the uh, bipolar device so that we could change its power handling capability so if we go back and now open up the tuner we'll have the additional uh, well the additional variable if you will of the power to tune on of the I'm sorry the DC setting to tune on so if we do that let me try to get this in a there we go, put that over there. Uh, now what we can do is not only tune on the power level of the transmitter, you can see we're getting nonlinear, we get some spectral regrowth there, some phase rotation. But now we can see if we wanted to operate at this power level, could we change the bias on our device? Now what happens as I change the bias is, rather than using the behavioral model that it previously extracted for our microwave office circuit, it has to recalculate that by running the appropriate harmonic balance simulations, then automatically re-extracting on the fly the behavioral model for VSS. And we can see that if we do crank up the uh, bias on our bipolar device, that we can get some nice performance again where we have a clean constellation and not too much spectral regrowth. Uh, similarly, we can drop the uh, bias on the device to see if we may be, op be able to operate in a portable mode and see what that does. Uh, you can see that we're getting a whole lot of AM to PM distortion because we're now operating up here in this curve, this part of the AM to PM curve, a lot of spectral regrowth and a lot of rotation on our constellation. So let's back off on the power level again in real time. And we can see that, uh, you know, if we have enough power getting above our noise floor, that we can get a clean constellation. And again, we can just continually tune or change our bias level to begin to get a, uh, a qualitative as well as a somewhat quantitative feel as to where um, we get into trouble in terms of the bias. And every time I change this bias on the device, VSS is smart enough to know that it needs a new model from Microwave Office. So VSS pauses for a moment, allows Microwave Office to run the harmonic balance simulation all automatically, and then re-extract the, the model. What makes this possible is the AWR Unified Data Model, uh, which unites uh, all these tools under the one database and uh, sets up a vehicle for them to communicate with each other whenever changes are made so the whole design stays um, synchronized. If you'd like more information about VSS or the Unified Data Model or Microwave Office, go to awrcorp.com and check out the other videos, white papers, uh, examples, uh, that sort of thing, or you can contact your AWR sales professional.